For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. That means the Messiah is coming to earth with a government on his shoulder, not a religion. It's very important. So a kingdom is a government, just like the United Kingdom of Great Britain, and they rule domains, territories. Earth and all the planets are God's property. How? He created them. So the whole universe is God's domain by creation rights. God did not have to fight for territory. Most kingdoms have to fight for territory. In order for Great Britain to dominate the Bahama Islands, they had to fight the Spanish and the French. And they eventually won. Matter of fact, the Bahamas used to be under the control of the Spaniards. Then the French came and fought. They beat the French. And then the British came and fought and the British won over the Spanish. Now, if the British kingdom did not win, you would be speaking Spanish. See, whoever wins, you speak their language. <laughs> you can tell who won by the language the citizens speak. I ain't getting into tongues yet, but you'll understand what I'm talking about. You can tell who rules you by the language that takes over your life. The French kept Haiti. The Spaniards kept Cuba. The British kept the Bahamas. So even though we are all a part of one chain of islands, whoever controlled the domain control the language and the culture of those people. Black Haitians are your cousins. Black Cubans are your cousins. I'm talking about the black people now. Same boats. But the difference is different kingdoms took over them. That's how different a kingdom can make you. Even though your cousin is in Haiti and your cousin is in Cuba, you are completely different from each other because of the kingdom that took over your life. In other words, when you come into the kingdom of God, you could be living in the same house with your wife. And suddenly you become different from your spouse. Oh, oh, oh. That's why when you come to the kingdom of God, you can't keep the same company anymore because you don't speak the same language anymore and your culture is different. So that's why you can tell when a person has entered a kingdom, a different kingdom, their language changes. Their food changes. What they drink. Is it coming clear? So the British took over these Bahama Islands and they ruled the Bahamas. Now, did you know, of course some of you may remember this, but the British had to fight for the Bahamas twice. Do you remember that in college, in school? Some of you don't remember that. They fought the Spaniards and they lost. They won and then they lost. And they came back and fought again. And the second time, they took Nassau Harbor. Whoever controls the harbor controls the domain. The harbor is the gate to an island. That's why Nassau is important. Nassau is a unique place. That's why it's the capital. It is in the middle, but it has the deep harbor. That's why the capital is here. We're not the biggest island, but we get the deepest harbor. Whoever controls the harbor controls the nation. The harbor of your life is your eyes and your ears. 
Take heed what you allow into your air. If your eye is single, your whole body is under control, Jesus says. Whatever you're watching on TV or on the internet is controlling your island. Whatever you keep listening to is invading your life. So Christ says, take heed what you hear. Be quick to hear, slow to speak. Be careful what you hear because it's invasion. Now, I wanted to make the point that the British had to fight twice because they lost the Bahamas the first time. They won and then there was a fight and they lost it. Now, whenever a kingdom loses property, territory, the kingdom is affected in two ways. One, it loses glory. And two, it loses wealth. Because the wealth of a kingdom is its territory. Write that down, please. The wealth of kingdoms are their territory. This is why kingdoms are always exploring and trying to get more property. Because if you get more territory, you are considered to be a great kingdom. This is why, if you study history, all kingdoms finance expeditions of exploration in order for those kingdoms to expand the territory and gain new territory. And the more they gain, they're considered more powerful. Especially if the territory has natural wealth. So God, who is the king of heaven, which is invisible, but it's real, he decided to expand his territory. He already ruled the unseen world. He already is the Lord and King of the invisible world. But he wanted to expand his territory and there was no other territory to invade. So God decided, I will create new territory so I can rule that too. Are you all excited for that? That's, a, that's so heavy, I just shout praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. See, you missed the whole point. It's a good place to say amen right just now. See, God already ruled the invisible, but he wanted to expand territory and there wasn't any more. So he created new territory called the seen world. Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God, that's a self-sufficient one, created the heavens, the invisible world, and the earth. 500 million galaxies they've found so far. None of them colliding into each other. A galaxy is a conglomeration of solar systems. A solar system is a system of planets going around a star. That means you gotta at least multiply 500 million by another 20 million. Therefore you got over billions of billions of stars and no one crashing. Tell your neighbor, there gotta be a God. See, the atheist gotta be completely foolish. The Bible says, only the fool has said in his heart. Ain't nobody keeping that in order. So God created the seen world to expand his kingdom. And God therefore rules the heavens and the earth. Now here's where the problem begins. He decided that he would rule this planet, this one planet in the midst of all those solar systems, by his children. So he extended rulership to earth through his children. And his children became therefore, can I use the term, vice regents local kings oh hallelujah I say hallelujah uh, let me explain something to you because I'm, I'm trying to get to the Holy Ghost I'm setting up the Holy Spirit right now okay I want you to understand who the Holy Spirit is 
You see, when a king has children, we are called the children of God. When a king has children, and God says he is what? King. Open up your gates and let the king of where? Glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. So open up your gates and let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord. The Lord strong and mighty. He is the, not prime minister, but king of what? Glory. Glory is the heavens, the invisible world. And now a king has kids called men. Whenever a king has children, they are called prince and princesses. And as long as the king is alive, the kids can never become kings. That is why Prince Charles is so frustrated. Because he has been a prince all his life. His mother would not die. And based on how old his grandmother was, ain't no hope for the poor fella. Are you following me? So Prince Charles cannot become king as long as his mother, Queen Elizabeth, is alive. Because in order for a child to become a king or a queen on the throne, the parent, the king or the queen has to die. Now the problem with God is you can never become king in his throne because he cannot die. Now follow God now. So if you study kingdoms, follow me now. You can never ever become a king. If your father is a king and he's still alive, never. You can never become king. So the only way for the father to allow his child to become a king, the kingdoms have a system. Or check history, oh, this happens a couple of times in history. Is that in order for the king's children to become kings while the king is still alive, he has to remove the children out of his territory. As long as they are in the same territory with him, the king, they are prince and princess. If he can get them out of his territory completely and put them in a foreign one, then they can become king at the same time. Over their own domain. You following me? That's the only way that a child could become a king while the parent, the king, is alive. So as long as man is with the father, God, he's a prince, a princess. So if the father wants his children to have the same power, authority, glory, dominion as the father has, he has to get them out of his territory. So God says, talking to himself, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness. Now you can tell God's plan for you even before he released you from himself. Why? You're going to like this. He created the territory before he created you. Yes, sir. Genesis 1 verse 1 says what? In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That means he got a plan. He's going to get rid of his kids because he wants his kids to become rulers just like their daddy. So he made the earth in order for you to have power, like your daddy. And that's why Genesis chapter 2 is so important. Because chapter 2 is God removing you out of the spirit world and putting you in an earth suit so that you can leave the supernatural world and come into the natural world which is a whole new realm and now you can have dominion over the earth praise God therefore the key to your power on earth is your body oh you are slow tonight your body is your most powerful weapon on earth because it's your dirt suit that takes you out of the spirit world where your father is king and that is why in 
Genesis 1:26. I quote, let us make man in our own image and in our likeness and let them have dominion over the earth, God said.